Hey, this is Doug Field, CEO of the Institute for Healthcare Consumerism. Uh, welcome back to the segment. I'm joined here by our co-hosts, Ron Bachman and Jonathan Field. Uh, the topic of this segment is that ever-popular private exchange discussion. And joining us to lead that discussion with us today is Brian Clay, Director of Private Exchanges with Crowder & Company in New York. Hi, right, Brian, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. good. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Hey, can you uh, start out by giving our audience just a uh, brief background around Crowder & Company and uh, your, your place in this space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Crowder & Company, we're a, a boutique brokerage. Um, we handle employee benefits, property casualty, management liability, overall risk management for, for our client base. Um, we're headquartered here in New York. Uh, we've got 10, 10 offices across the country. Okay. Um, and we, we define our client base truly as middle market with, with an average um, employee count of 100, 100 to 5,000 lives. Um, you know, we have some, some larger, some smaller, but that's really our core, our core business. Um, also, a large part of the, the business that we do is within the private equity space, helping our clients manage uh, mergers and acquisitions activity. Um, and, and then myself, um, here within the firm, I'm focused within the employee benefits practice. Uh, specifically, I'm the director of exchange solutions for Crowder Company. Um, so I've really been tasked with uh, analyzing th- this market, the emerging market of the, of the, the, the private exchange space, uh, and really looking uh, looking to define Crowder Company's strategic approach to that space. Well, w- well welcome to the wild, wild west, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yeah, give us your view of what you see across the private exchange space right now. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head. It really is. Um, <laughs> it really is a wild west. Uh, um, it's very much an emerging market. Um, you know, there are uh, close, close to 100 players out there right now, sort of jockeying for position uh, within the space. Um, you know, we've seen tech companies, we've seen payers, carriers. Um, Emerge into the space. Obviously, brokers um, set, setting up exchanges, so it's um, sort of a, a flock to market is, is what we're seeing. Uh, what's What's the most confusing uh, factors that you help your employers with? Is they kind of I mean, because you know, I think a lot of this is CFOs light bulb goes off. They turn around and say, "Hey, we got to figure this out." And they reach out to you, you know, and you know, uh, what do you see as some of the most confusing factors that they're wrestling with right now? Sure. I mean, I think the, the, one of the, the first question, question marks is, um, you know, is this a single carrier exchange? Is this a multi carrier exchange? Um, there's a lot of uh, sort of murkiness uh, about that. So we're spending a lot of time with our with our employer groups, sort of educating them on who, who would be a fit for a multi carrier exchange, uh, who, who's not. Um, it, it seems in the industry that the industry has drawn a line at about 3,000 eligible lives um, to, to make a multi carrier exchange. Uh, viable, mm-hmm. um, so that's a big part of the conversation, and it, it, a, a lot of the conversation is also about the the architecture of, of a private exchange. So, conceptually, I think everybody's there. I think everybody understands, you know, basically what an exchange is. Uh, but what's the architecture of it? Uh, you know, who, who's actually going out and procuring the plans? Uh, which, in, in most cases, is, is still the brokerage community. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Where do the contracts sit once you sign? And, and what we're seeing is that employers are, you know, still being the plan sponsor and signing contracts. Um, you know, big question mark that we're, we're seeing is, you know, what's the time frame on implementation? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what we're finding is that the runway for rolling out an exchange is a bit longer than a traditional renewal process. Uh, so helping them manage through that. And then, you know, one, one of the other areas, you know, near and dear to the, the CFO heart, if you will, um, is, is what's the cost of these private exchanges? Mm-hmm. Um, so what we're seeing from an, from an admin perspective is somewhere from between seven and $9,000 per 100 employees per year in cost. And, you know, I, I don't think a lot of employers are focused on that when they're, you know, talking conceptually mm-hmm. about private exchanges. Mm-hmm. So Brian, Sean Bachman here. Um, what What is the uniqueness about your approach? You're a broker out there, and a lot of brokers have even established their own exchanges, uh, maybe offer some exchanges. What What makes your program unique in this uh, developing marketplace? Yeah, I mean, as, as we went through the, you know, sort of the vetting process on this, um, you know, at, at the core of our business, what we do, we're, we're consultants. Um, so to put it simply, you know, we, we objectively evaluate you know, various solutions for, for our clients. Um, so in the traditional sense, you know, we look to vet carriers, plan designs, 
wellness vendors, TPAs, uh, in some cases payroll vendors, PEOs, benefit admin systems. Um, so what, what we've done is, um, you know, Instead of going out and setting up our own exchange like a lot of brokers have done, um, you know, similar to um, you know the locked-in approach, we, we, we're applying our, our core competency as as a consultant to the private exchange space to make sure that our our clients are making you know, informed decisions. Um, I, you know, I think the space is really in its in infancy right now, and our, our conclusion that we came up with is that it's it's it's, it's too soon to, to hitch our hitch our wagon to a singular horse at this point. So are you, um, when you're doing the consulting as to where they go, um, uh, you're getting your, 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 I'm trying to understand your business model, you're getting your consulting fees for doing that. If you place them, are you also then the uh, broker of record? Uh, typically, yes. Okay. So in, um, in deciding where to go, tell us about some of the tools that you're using and, uh, and how it helps uh, the employer determine what is the best uh, um, exchange for them to go to because it sounds almost like you're an independent uh, agent, if you will, uh, but you're just applying that to a brokerage uh, type model where you're helping them select and then you're uh, you're staying in in uh, involved with that process throughout. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you know, I think the first step, um, the first analysis that we do is, is is sort of crunching numbers on, um, uh, you know, I'm projecting what what it would look like to take, you know, your 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 population today and, 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 you know, put it down into a new environment within the private exchange environment. So um, our, our initial conversations are surrounding the analytics, um, you know, what we think um, the, the, the finances will look like if you, if you put a population into, into an exchange, uh, both now and in the future going forward. Um, then from there we look to get a sense, um, you know, w w what, what is the employer looking for? Um, you know, are you looking for a singular carrier exchange, a multi-carrier exchange? Um, you know, uh, from a funding perspective, are you, you know, partial to, uh, to, to self-funding, fully, fully, uh, you know, fully insured mm -hmm. scenarios, um, uh, benefit designs? What sort of carriers are you looking for? So we, we go through a process of a looking at, you know, w w what are the nuts and bolts on the finances, and then, and then b, you know, what are you looking to accomplish? And then from there. Um, you know, we, we look at the, the the exchange world, if you will, and, and we look to, to line up, um, you know, the, the best solution for them. Hey, hey, Brian, uh, you've got a very unique client base uh, around private equity that you alluded to before on the program. Talk to us about private exchanges and uh, the maybe unique opportunities that, that, that brings to the private equity space. Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, when, when we look at our, 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 our business, um, you know, we're tied largely to, to – the acquisitions that these private equity companies are making. Mm -hmm. So, there, our, our client base is, you know, all, all over the all over the place from an industry per perspective, right. from a regional perspective. Um, so, so, some of the early conversations um, at the private equity level that we've been having are, you know, look, this, this is an emerging market. It, it, it's certainly, you know, getting traction. Uh, where can we apply this within your portfolio of companies um, you know, to, to start? Um, you know, fi fixing your costs, and, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, the, the idea to, of going into a defined contribution scenario with, with a fixed budget for the employer, and then the, the you know the private equity firm that sits above that group or that 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 employer is very attractive. So we're definitely getting um, a, a lot of eyebrows raised in the private equity space. Um, you know, as we watch this market emerge. Uh, Brian, on the um, on the employer side. Um, we hear a lot of hype going on around anything that's new, and uh, then we have to sort of see how you know effective the different options are, and we're going to have some winners and some losers. But we're clearly moving in this direction of uh, of private exchanges. Um, how are you seeing the current movement, and what do you see as the prospects in the future? Is it something that's really booming right now across the country? Is there certain geographical uh, interests uh, more than others? Um, uh, certain sizes that are more interested in making these changes. Give us a profile of what you see uh, the market movement being. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, r right now, uh, you know, we're, we're in full swing with our January 1st, 2015, 2015 strategy discussions uh, with our client base. So I think that the, the employer community overall um, is showing a, 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 a big appetite for looking at this. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to see, you know, see what the private exchange is, what, you know, what it looks like and feels like. Um, and, and that's across industry. That's a, across um, you know. That's across size. That's across region. Uh, there's a. I, I think the the latest numbers that I've seen survey data. Seventy five percent of employers are are interested in mm -hmm. in exploring this. Um, 
the reaction that we're getting, you know, um, as, as we start um, as we start speaking with them, you know, some employers are asking, um, is there too much choice for, mm-hmm. from you know, you know within an exchange? And mm-hmm. they're they're a little bit skeptical of about uh, you know, can an exchange decision making tool you know get the employee to the right place? Mm-hmm. Um, but but we're seeing you know a big flurry of let's look at it now when we sit down in the strategy discussions at the end of the day we say you know realistically what what is it what what are your thoughts on adopting this for 2015 um, you know we find that about 25 percent of the people that we're talking to are you know are are, are ready to go and really interested and, and the majority of those 75 um, percent or so uh, are saying look we want to take another lap. Uh, we we mm-hmm. want to we want to let this market mature a little bit, and we want to keep an eye on it. Yeah, we see kind of the same thing. I, I mean, I think the, there are some hidden surprises that are coming out of the market. I mean, Accenture came out talking about 2014, where they originally said a million participants would be in the exchange in 2014. Their new, latest number say three million. So I I think we're going to probably see some of the same, but. You know, we we too look ahead to 2016 and see that as maybe the big explosion year where, you know, companies are ramping up. Yeah, and I think the Fortune 500s are, are obviously, you know, we've seen the the, the bigger companies uh, jump first, if you will. Um, I think the middle market where we play, it's, um, you know, there, there's a little bit more trepidation. Sure. Does that mean you're seeing more of the uh, single carrier model? Uh, I keep hearing that that seems to be picking up speed because of the complications of the multi-carrier and risk adjustment flows back and forth and formulas make that happen. Um, uh, are you seeing something different, or tell us what you think about the uh, multi-carrier versus the single carrier? Yeah, I mean, uh, cer- certainly um, it, certainly we're seeing more in the, in the single carrier format. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, the multi-carrier format, um, I, I think, it is even less mature in the single mm-hmm. carrier format. I think there's an overall, um, you know, hesitancy based on you know some some of the issues with the public exchanges to um, to, to to go that far, if you will. Right. Hey, hey Brian, we've got about a minute to go, and I want to give you the opportunity to kind of uh, wrap this up from your point of view and leave our audience with one one to two uh, takeaways. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think the biggest takeaway here is this is very much an emerging market. Um, they're close to, you know, 100 exchange options um, out there right now. Uh, there, doesn't, there doesn't appear to be a true national solution that has fully stocked shelves, uh, you know, for every carrier in every state. Um, it, major carriers ha- haven't really jumped into this space yet, although, you know, Cigna United, is, is, is start, they're starting to dip their toes. Um, so it's emerging. I, I think that, that's a key takeaway. Um, I, I think at, from an employer perspective, um, the success of an employer's you know, ability to um, the, the, the success of an adoption of a private exchange is based on their ability to pick the right exchange. Um, you know, there are many criteria to, to consider funding, plan selection. Um, you know, each exchange that we work with has, has its own strengths and weaknesses, and really identifying what those are relative to the client's goals um, is sort of paramount to the process. Um, and then I think the, the last takeaway that I'll, that I'll leave you with is that you know, adopting an exchange doesn't excuse an employer from you know, the challenging aspects of, of managing a benefit off- offering that exists today. Um, you know, there's still a need to manage claims, ensure compliance, communicate with employees, um, you know, maintain a competitive contributions, manage the employer spend. Um, th- those all still exist within, exchange, within yeah, but- an exchange environment. That's very well said, Brian. I hey, um, really appreciate you taking time out of your day uh, with us today. Great segment. Uh, have a great weekend. And to our audience, stay tuned for the next segment of Healthcare Consumers and Radio.